So the plan for this talk is to talk a little bit about what is coming in MISP um, in the near future. So now we've heard a lot of different use cases. So now to close the day off a little bit, it's just going to be a, sh a short presentation to something that we have planned for the future of MISP. So first of all, one of the things that is going to start happening soon, and it kind of started happening already a while ago, is we're going to be entering a phase of a massive rework for MISP for some parts of it. The idea is that we want to, uh, to take some of the frameworks that we use in MISP and move to a more modern version of it over time. So uh, generally this means that we want to basically uh, change the backend to KPHP 3.x and uh, move the uh, UI to a more modern version. So basically have uh, Bootstrap 4 support. Our current UI is kind of ancient. So <laughs> I, I think the time when we moved it to Bootstrap 2 was in 2013, and we're kind of sticking with that for a while. Uh, so it's a good moment to do that. Now, we want to use this change and, and this upgrade to actually get rid of a lot of the baggage that we've been carrying around for ages and ages with us. So it's, uh, so it's a good moment for us to do a little bit of house cleaning, basically. Uh, now, some of this work has already started behind the scenes, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what, what we've pl uh, planned and what the ideas are behind it. So, first big caveat, uh, the downside of this entire upgrade will, uh, for, for the users out there will be that for the first time ever, a Git pool will not suffice for upgrading your MISP when this happens. So that means we're going to have upgrade scripts, you will have to execute those instead of running the normal update button. This will be a one-time thing. Once you have created this version, from then on we resume the normal operations and you will keep updating the normal way as we did before. That means that this will be on a separate branch with, uh, on GitHub. Uh, now, with all that said, one of our, uh, our main objectives is that whatever we do with this upgrade, all the APIs that we use nowadays are going to be fully compatible with MISP as it is today. So for anyone that is using tools around MISP, anyone that is synchronizing MISP, you won't really see a change whether you upgrade or you don't upgrade. Though, over a long period of time, of course, it's highly advised that you do upgrade. Now, something else that we wanted to do with this upgrade was finally get rid of ancient language support in MISP. This has been holding us back since ages. It is a little known fact because we don't advertise it anymore, but, but MISP actually works on PHP 5.6 still. So if you're running 5.6, it still works fine, and we have a bunch of users that are doing it. We don't want to keep it this way. I mean, end-of-life languages, we don't want to keep supporting forever, and we're kind of aching for those new features of those newer, more modern versions of the languages. It's a good moment for us. Also, uh, this coincides uh, well with uh, Python 2.7 going end-of-life. We can finally send it off and wave goodbye and move on to something more modern. So the required versions are going to be PHP 7.2 and Python 3.6 starting when this release happens. But generally, be advised that probably from January 1st on, we won't care really about Python 2.7 anymore. So that's just something that will go away together with the end of life. Now, uh, the back end of KPHP 3 is quite different uh, than, it, uh, than what we were used to until now. So we'll have to go through a refactor before we start with the actual upgrade process. What this uh, means exactly, we'll talk about in a moment. So some things that we want to get out of this um, uh, this whole upgrade. First of all, more, more performance. Some some things that have been holding us back were basically part of the old framework that we're using. That means that whenever it comes to database queries, we did not have as much control as we wanted to have. This will change once we move to a new system. So we're going to be able to uh, boost performance quite a bit there. Uh, we also want to move to a more sleek UI. So right now we're basically running some crazy legacy code there that we want to just scrap and move to something more modern. Uh, another thing that we have planned, and, and this is something that is still in the concept phase, we'll see whether we actually go through with this or not, but currently it's planned, is to have two modes of running this. The more we talk to users, the more we see that we have these this two separate ways of using MISP. One is basically a sharing hub. So if anyone here is connected to MISP Priv, uh, or MISP Priv instance, that's a typical sharing hub. You have a bunch of different organizations exchanging information. On the other hand, behind MISP Priv, we have a bunch of internal MISP instances. And those instances are only for us. We use them to collect data from sandboxes, from spammy uh, mail accounts, and so on. One of the downsides is that we basically have the full-blown ACL for these systems as well, even though we know we're the only users of it. So we kind of want to have two modes of operating MISP. One would be a cut-down version that is more for what we call an endpoint MISP, which is internal to your own organization, and that would basically not have to go through these extra uh, hurdles of retrieving data for each of the users, so everyone would kind of be like a site admin on that system. On the other hand, we want to maintain how, how the sharing MISP work as of today. 
So this way, you would be able to run your MISP in two separate ways, depending on what your use case is. Uh, we've heard uh, quite a few uh, few organizations nowadays talk about using MISP uh, for threat hunting, for example. So taking MISP with them, loaded with data that they use for hunting. Uh, to a customer, for example, this is a typical use case where it's not a normal sharing scenario. So you don't you don't want to be limited in how you access your own data that you're carrying with you, for example. So that is uh, basically uh, one of the things that uh, we want to do there. Now, to talk a little bit about the process, how we are going to go to approach all of this. First of all, uh, we split it into four phases that I'm going, just going to go through. First, first of all, we're going to be tying off some loose ends first. We have some larger features that are pending for a long time, so we kind of set our mind to it to, first of all, close this off before uh, starting anything big uh, behind the scenes. Uh, so one of those is basically a feature called Zoidberg, that, uh, or that's the branch, what it's called, so it's kind of cryptic. Uh, so basically it's, it's a feature that uh, Sami has been working on for a bit over a year now, I think. And we, we faced some major blockers there for a long time that are now resolved. The idea behind this feature is that we're going to get first seen, last seen on each data point. That will allow us to, to put more of a time-based aspect on any data that we have. So it's going to be optional. It's going to be in addition to the current timestamping that we have. And the idea is if you want to, um, to basically um, include the data of when an indicator was active, your only uh, means until now were basically sightings. Now, that meant that you had to basically set two sightings to set a time range. That was a little bit silly. We, we were going to now have it baked into the data model itself. And, that will, uh, and you will have a more authoritative way of describing that as opposed to the crowdsource sighting system in addition to that. Another thing that has been uh, missing for a while is a modular feed parser. Uh, anyone that has worked with MISP feeds has seen that you, you right now have three parsers in MISP. One is the MISP format parser. You have a, a free text parser and a CSV parser. And it's kind of silly that we have all these modular aspects of MISP, but we didn't open up the feed uh, parsing to basically a mo uh, modular system. So this is something that's uh, been semi-complete for a while now. So now is a good moment to finish it off before we move on to the uh, whole upgrades uh, and, and, and then release that as soon as possible. Now, something else that popped up, and this is rather recent, but we want to still kind of inject it before we, uh, we start with the upgrade process, is the idea that we are great uh, with MISP at describing structured data, but something that is really missing is the unstructured information that goes along with it. So one of the things we want to do are basic reporting via markdown documents that we attach to an event. And these should be uh, basically um, uh, something that's synchronized together with the events and are easily viewable and editable directly from the interface. So this is something that is coming soon too. And then, uh, last but not least, we have a bunch of pull requests that we have been really slacking with. So this is mostly on me, so I have a lot of catching up to do on that one. So for an anyone that has pending uh, uh, pull requests that are kind of in limbo, I'm sorry about that, especially Richard, <laughs> that is somewhere here. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's been neglected for too long, so that, that should be done soon. Uh, now, once we're done with, the, uh, with, uh, with this phase, uh, we want to move into the next one, which is basically the preparation for the main move itself. Now, the good thing uh, with the way we have clustered uh, the different phases is that the second phase can happen parallel to any other new feature development. So this will uh, not block us to do anything as we normally do. Uh, everything is business as usual, but we will start refactoring a large part of the code base to make the move easier afterwards. So this has already been kind of ongoing for a while. If anyone has been monitoring how the UI has, has changed recently, and not in terms of looks, because nothing changed there, uh, more behind the scenes, we started moving from raw HTML templates to a lot of configurable uh, factories, basically. That means that we're passing JSON objects to the view, and the JSON object will auto-construct the view based, uh, based on the configurations. We want to move the entire UI to this, and then once we are going to do the actual move, we just have to change these factories instead of the actual view files, which is going to take a lot of burden for, uh, from us when we're doing the upgrade. We want to do something similar on the back end. One of the ideas is that basically any database query that we do will go between a very lightweight, uh, lightweight uh, middleware that we develop, and uh, that will make the move from one backend to the other a lot easier. One of our plans with this is also is to make MISP a little bit more modular when it comes to backends. Right now, the only supported database system is MySQL. 
we kind of want to uh, see whether we can open it up a little bit to some other backends uh, in addition to that. Okay. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. And then we have the transition phase. So this is where the actual uh, actual transition will happen. This uh, we don't expect this phase to be very long. Uh, our plan is to keep it between one to two months maximum. Uh, the idea is that during the preparation pay, uh, phase, we should have gotten to a point already by this point where the move itself is really only affecting those factories that we've already talked about. So we're going to, uh, to transition those to a new system. Uh, at this point, we will freeze uh, 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 new development for that one or two months while we do this transition. Um, and then basically uh, uh, have two parallel branches of this. So at this moment, we will uh, uh, move to the uh, branch of the future uh, version, and 2.4 will become um, uh, basically a live support branch that we will keep supporting for a while. Uh, yeah. The idea behind uh, the last phase, so this is once we have basically managed to move our, our system to, uh, to the new, uh, new backend and to a new framework, is that we're still going to keep supporting 2.4 for a while. So it means we don't want to have an immediate cutoff when, uh, when all of this happens. Security fixes will happen for a short while afterwards still, and the two versions will run side by side. One of our goals is to maintain uh, the synchronization between the two versions, so we will not break uh, any compatibility there. So you, you will basically be able to upgrade at your own uh, pace uh, once we get to this point. So that's basically it for the, uh, for the big upgrade. Apart from that, we have some other things that we're pl uh, planning during most of the preparation phase. Uh, so we are par uh, part of a project called Vario, where we're going to uh, start, uh, start building uh, the ability to export feeds uh, for open data directories from MISP. So this is also coming rather soon. Uh, apart from that, uh, one of the things that we have been working with for a while now is basically talking to feed providers and seeing how we can basically, using that feed system that I already mentioned, start integrating the various vendor feeds directly in MISP so that they can basically tell their customers, okay, if you are using MISP, uh, just go to uh, your feed page, enter your credentials there, start, start pulling in our feed uh, using a prepared uh, converter, and then you can start using the data in your system. So that is one of the things. Now, on top of that, uh, and Sami has had a great presentation already on the, uh, on the decaying of indicators. Now, this system has, is very new, but it's already gaining a lot of momentum. So wherever we're going, basically, people are interested in how to adapt it to their own workloads, uh, and we're getting a lot of feedback, which is great for us. So one of the things that we want to do, basically, is to use that feedback to further uh, improve the system. So again, anyone that is interested in, in this, let us know about your thoughts. Let us know what is missing for you and how we could improve it. Uh, something else that is just uh, on the sidelines so far is we're basically evaluating different models for uh, offering professional support. So this is something that comes up very often. Uh, people uh, come and ask us, is there any way to get professional support for MISP? We're now evaluating our options that we can do there. So this is something that we're also working with. So another tool that is also in development that will assist MISP, and uh, this is still very early days for this, is a, uh, is a tool that we, uh, we're going to call Cerebrate. It's another open source tool. The idea is everyone can host one, everyone can use a hosted one if they have access to it, so kind of like with MISP. The idea is that you want to basically have uh, semi-centralized repositories for organizations and communities. One of the trickiest things we're dealing with is we're basically right now growing into massive communities of MISP users in our various communities. Some things that we're missing right now are uh, authoritative organization information uh, that we could pull from a, uh, from a trusted source. So the idea is, for example, for our private sector community and for, for our, the communities that we run in general, we would love to be able to run an organization registry that would be opt-in, where organizations could say, if someone is interested in getting in touch with us and knowing who we are, here's some basic information about us. Here are our signing keys, so that when we start communicating, you can ensure it's us. And this is basically uh, something that has been a blocker for us for a while when it comes to, for example, signing information. So right now, even if we, if we had a prototype a while ago for signing MISP events, one of the things we're missing is basically, okay, it's great, we can sign the events, but how can I get the keys of the person that signed? How can I ensure it's really them? So this was kind of missing from the chain. So this is uh, coming. This is, it will also play a, a large part in the uh, uh, 
scoring of indicators in that we can basically have a vetting system for organizations that is per community. So the idea is to also use this as a source for that. So the idea will be simple. Uh, you can basically um, uh, run a Cerebrate server, or can you, you can ask your communities uh, to give you access to a Cerebrate server. Each of these Cerebrate servers con uh, is consisting of a group of different MISPs. And then basically, uh, it, it can help you to interconnect each of the different uh, MISP instances uh, within this group if the um, willingness is there from both sides uh, of, the, of the peers. And then you can basically interconnect your individual cerebrates with others to exchange information if there is a need to exchange organization information between them. And then you can join this swarm of different cerebrates out there. So that's basically it. Any questions for this or anything that you're interested in particular? Yes? <clears throat> Two questions. One, if I understood correctly, when you talked about maintaining security patches for 2.4 and this upgrade, and I remember, maybe it was a dream, someone telling me that MISP was never going to iterate past 2.4. <laughs> was I smoking something wacky? So that's one, and two is um, uh, in terms of some of the uh, legacy garbage that you get to throw out, what are a couple of the top favorite things that you're going to get to leave behind? So very good question. So first of all, in, indeed, we've been saying that for a while, and we kind of thought it would keep going on forever and ever with 2.4. Uh, but um, at some point, it makes sense to, uh, to just have a, an upgrade like this. So, uh, uh, I mean, we've been on 2.4 for four years now, so it's been quite a long time. Um, and basically, the reason why we wanted to stay on 2.4 was for the simplicity of the upgrade. So, the downside with, with a move like this is, of course, you're going to have to have new prerequisites like the newer PHP version, newer Python version, and so on. So you, you are going to have to have a manual upgrade for that for a lot of servers. So that so that's, indeed, we kind of lied. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we can't keep uh, uh, staying on 2.4 forever for this. Uh, if we can do another two, uh, four years on the next version, that would also be great. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. As for some of the top features that we want to scrap, I mean, most of the features that we want to scrap, hopefully you don't know about, <laughs> because we've, we've had a bunch of endpoints in MISP that haven't been documented for at least five years uh, nowadays, but they're still there, because we still know of some legacy tools that are written seven years ago, and those legacy tools are still using an endpoint that we have no idea whether they still work or not, because nobody's touching them really. So, for example, uh, some examples of that, If I, I, I don't know, is anyone here using the events slash XML endpoint. So this is not the XML uh, format that you can request the data in. Uh, in. It's, re it's literally an XML endpoint in MISP. Is anyone using that, for example? Okay, luckily not. <laughs> so it's still there. It's still a massive part of code that we just want to get rid of. And it's, uh, from what we're seeing, nobody's using that anymore, and it's not documented. So we're full of endpoints like this that we get for ancient, ancient legacy reasons that we would lo love to get rid of. Any other questions? No? Uh, maybe you should mention the new community JSON file that we have in MISP. Indeed. So that's something I've forgotten. So there is another initiative that we've already kind of started in MISP. It's a feature called uh, Community Lists. In MISP right now, it has four communities which are all run by us. So we just kind of crammed our own communities in there as a first example. The idea is very simple. We want communities to be able to self-advertise through MISP. So the idea is uh, that very often when we go to trainings, when we meet other users of MISP, they come to us and say, okay, that's great. Uh, we have MISP installed. We're perhaps getting data from you guys or not. Who else can we get data from? Which communities can we join? And our answer is we have no idea. We don't know who, you, who you're eligible for and what communities you should be part of. But very often these communities, uh, even if they have requirements on who can join them, would love to be able to just say to their users, okay, this is what you have to do to join us. And the idea is we have a system now where you can self-describe your community and users can send you a request uh, directly from MISP that basically asks for access. Now, one of the things that we're looking for is basically communities out there that want to self-advertise so that we basically don't have to deal with all the users coming to us and asking us for directions. So if anyone is running such a community, let us know about it. We can add you to it. Uh, we just need a description of who you are, 
and then people uh, can start get, uh, getting, uh, sending you request emails asking for access, and then you can decide whether you give them access or not. Okay? Any other questions? In that case, I think. So, yes, so I think that's it for the Miss Summit for the year. So, yeah. so thank you. So thank you everyone for, for joining us and uh, we really hope that it was useful for you. Um, so for the ones that are following us with uh, AKLU and Attack Community, so uh, I think uh, it's a long week ahead. Um, so don't hesitate to contact us. If you have any idea of partnership, collaboration, want to join any of our communities, don't hesitate. Um, GitHub, Gitter, and we do a lot of announcements on Twitter, so don't hesitate to follow us on Twitter. That's basically it. Thank you very much.